I'm just... I want to see her so badly. It's been so long. I've been waiting for this. He won fiance visa or I won 30 petition. I can't remember which one. I've been waiting for so long. It's been like eight months and I'm just going. I'm just so sad. What do I do? I know. I'm going to call my lawyer and I'm going to pester him for 30 minutes about what we can do to speed this up. Listen, here's the lawyer talking. I love you. You're my client. I love you. I care about you. In fact, I use Clio and I message you. As soon as you message me, I'm really good at it. But you're in the middle of a really long wait now. We filed your I-130 petition or your K-1 fiance visa or your 601A waiver or your 601 waiver. And you're waiting. That's been a long time. Eight months, 10 months, maybe you're in the 601A waiver process. Maybe you're, you're, you're creeping up on 18 months. What can I do? Well, dear viewer, it's not about what I can do. It's really at this point about what you can do. Let's talk about it after the break. Hey, welcome back to Log Rate. My name is Damien DeNoble. This is the channel where I give you reliable information to help you make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes on your immigration journey. Today, we are talking about something that you might be experiencing while you're waiting on your petition to process. Stress, worry, sadness, crazy bouts of uh, hyperactivity. Uh, where you just want to do everything around you, call everybody, send letters, uh, uh, petition Congress to change all immigration laws. Let's talk about what you really should be doing. Some point mid 2020, I realized that the majority of, of my job uh, with many immigration consulate uh, processes uh, ground to a halt with USCIS intermittently shutting down, the immigration courts shut down. I realized that most of my job was actually just uh, emotionally managing my clients. Uh, and it came at a really bad time. 2020 was a crazy year for our firm. We, we had a lot of a lot of people and then uh, I had to I had to you know downsize and furlough like a lot of places and then we had less people but the same number of clients and we had to redo our processes. You really had to kind of rework how we did a law. And the primary focus coming out of 2020 and all of 2021 has been to make sure that we have systems in place, we have, uh, communication avenues in place to manage the emotional well-being of our clients. Okay, so what do we do? What do we do? So at, at our firm, I, I prioritize communication and instead of instead of waiting for clients to call, I'll, I'll ask, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Okay, that's, that's, that's kind of the main thing. How are you feeling? How are you doing? If, if we're talking, that's kind of the first thing out of my mouth usually. And if we're ending some sort of uh, written exchange, uh, I'm asking and just let me know how you're feeling about throughout this process. And instead of using emails or phones, I kind of use this Clio text messaging service, which it, it makes it easier for me just to send a quick message checking in. That makes a lot of difference. But what I'm also telling folks is consider during this long wait, preemptively going to therapy. I know, I know that sounds, why, why, why therapy? Doesn't that sound extreme? Actually, no, this, these long waiting periods where your loved one is separated from you are actually very, very difficult. My father, when he came here in 1992, my mother and I were stuck in Sarajevo in Bosnia and you have these troops you have these Serbian troops slowly surrounding the city. Dad's watching it on TV. Everybody's watching it on TV. You have all these kind of uh, Clinton era, 1990s figures, Bush era, Bush one era, 1990s figures, trying to go to the Balkans, trying to stop the siege of Sarajevo. And we're in there. Dad loses 60 pounds waiting for us in the United States to come over on, on what would have been like a J2 uh, type visa. He was a researcher here in the United States. So, I mean, the guy didn't have 60 pounds to lose, but it was from all the stress of waiting, albeit 
trying to get us out of a war zone, but waiting. And hey, we know with the Afghanistani, uh, you know, refugee crisis uh, after the pullout of the United States, that, that, that there's a lot of families that are coming to the U.S. like that, not to mention the, uh, the poor Syrian people uh, who've had a war there uh, ongoing now for 10 years. And many other countries around the world, uh, Cameroon, uh, you know, uh, one of them, I could go on. Venezuela, good Lord. Okay, so it's stressful, even if you're not waiting on somebody to come from a war zone. Uh, so preemptive therapy, not a bad thing. Just find somebody that you can talk to, a professional, you know, once a month, so you can unload unload all this built up stress and anxiety. That's a combination of things that have been going on since COVID-19 struck, uh, the long wait times, the fact that Google is a really powerful anxiety creating device, and uh, the fact that your lawyer might not have any updates for you during these months of waiting, okay? So that's my first thing, preemptive therapy. Okay, number two, turn off all of the things all of the things in your life that give you dopamine hits. They give you these fast dopamine hits. So your mobile phones, your computers, your tablets, your Google searches, your social media, all of these things are designed to have you scroll, 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 jump around, jump around, jump around. And usually you're getting lots of information about the immigration process from random sources like myself. Like I might be one of those random sources that you're watching right now. Stop watching me. I'm random. Get out of here. You know, go, go put it down. But seriously, constantly doom scrolling through social media, through Google, and not allowing yourself to breathe in the open air of IRL in real life can create unneeded anxiety. So stop that. Instead, replace it with walking and my personal favorite, journaling on actual paper. Journaling on actual paper can really help dispel some of those thoughts. You don't like journal journaling? wishboarding, okay, on actual paper. If you can't do those things, then Pinterest. Pinterest with your partner abroad. So that's my third one. Pinterest seems to be something that's really fun for our fiance couples in particular, because they can imagine their life together. They can pull in all sorts of furniture. They can pull in all sorts of exotic destinations they're going to go to. That's a really good one. What you shouldn't do is look to get mad at the system, start changing the system, start getting mad at your lawyer, start getting mad at yourself, start crying on Zoom, which I've seen a lot, especially during the COVID era, because that's not going to help. Now, there are some couples where I tell them this and they just get mad at me because they think I'm talking down, but I'm not trying to talk down at you. I'm just trying to tell you what would help. So preemptive therapy, Stop doing anxiety provoking things on your digital media and instead replace it with walking and journals. And three, Pinterest. I know, I, I know I said no social media, but Pinterest seems to be kind of diffusing, okay? Was that third one random? A little bit, but again, I'm random, so you shouldn't even be watching me. Anyway, 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 my point is that waiting period is not easy. My dad lost so much weight, again, just waiting for us to come over. We were so afraid for him when I, when I first saw him, boy, he was skinny. Um, you gotta take care of yourself. So do it. Really take this uh, waiting period uh, seriously as one that's, that's going to be highly, highly stressful. So that's my piece of advice. I hope it helps. If you've made it this far, that means you like me. I like you. Go ahead and subscribe for me. Be notified of the next video. I'm gonna try to be this charming in every single video. I swear to God, just for you, just for you, okay? I'll see you next time, bye.